Hey everyone, today on the show we're talking about how to make your soil amazing. So it doesn't need to be complicated and there's not a million ways to get there, but I'll give you five things that we do and that a lot of the pros do out there that can really help improve the fertility in your soils. And the first one is to ditch any tilling. Anything that revolves around a rotor tiller, like your grandfather used to do, that's a huge no-no. You want to move away from that because the tiller destroys your soil ecology. And you want to replace a tiller with something like a broad fork. Like a broad fork will work the soil deeply, but it won't invert the layers. It won't disturb the ecology. It won't bring up weed seeds from the bottom up and it's gonna make sure that you have really loose and deep soil. So a broad fork is a really great tool for that. And from there, you wanna shallow cultivate to prepare your seed beds. So we did a video on permanent beds, you can check that out. But shallowly preparing your seed beds with something like a tilter or a wheel hoe, or if you're getting to the pro level, you can even use a walk behind tractor with a tool that doesn't invert the layers like a power harrow. So these are all great strategies to have amazing seed beds, great soil, loose and deep, perfectly conditioned without tilling it. Number two is to use great compost. Like that's the key to soil fertility is to inoculate your soil with amazing compost. And when I'm talking about amazing compost, I'm talking about compost that is alive, that has microbial life, bacterial life that has everything inside of it that is kind of inoculating your soil with beautiful ecology. And to have beautiful compost, to make beautiful compost, you know, you don't do it by chance. We have this video about how we do it here, but there's a lot of great folks out there that are doing amazing compost. And what you want to do is either buy compost from these guys, most often than not, they're geeks, or learn from them. But once you have the beautiful stuff, you want to make sure that you're putting enough of it also. A good half inch to an inch, and you don't need to till it in, bringing it back to principle number one. You can just lay down to the bed and just put a lot of it, and you can even seed directly onto it, okay? So that's another principle that's going to really help you with your fertility. So the next thing, and that's an important one, is keep it covered. Keep your soil covered as much as possible and as often as possible. So the biointensive techniques that I use and that I've been teaching for all these years does that. Because of the closed spacing, you see how the crop just occupies the space. It forms a canopy and that canopy shades out the weed. It just keeps the soil moist and all the benefits of getting more yields and just like a bigger revenue per square foot. But that's kind of built into the way we plant. These are closed spacings and it's gonna keep the soil covered once the plant is established. But there's other times where you know, you're, you're direct seeding or you're transplanting and you also wanna have the soil covered at that time. So you're using landscape fabric to you know, keep the weeds in check, but also to keep the soil covered, you're using black silage tarps that are UV treated to cover many, many beds at once. And that helps reduce the weed pressure on the farm, but it also just keeps it covered, which is what you want. Uh, we also rely on a lot of uh, floating row covers that that's gonna have thermal capacity. We use them mostly in the spring when actually the soil is bare because we're transplanting. So these row covers, they do protect the soil. And same thing with insect nets that we use in the summer. And then you can also mulch with straw, with leaves, or with compost. Compost is a great way, if you're layering compost, you can mulch that way. So just think as your soil as an open wound, and you wanna make sure that you're covering it with a plaster, or just like covering it with clothing or whatever. You wanna have it covered as much as possible. The other thing that's really important, and that's really where the pros uh, are very knowledgeable, 
is that you're not only feeding the soil, just adding compost in itself is, is great practice, but it's not enough. You're, you're feeding the soil, but you also want to make sure that you're feeding the plant. You're fertilizing the plant. So compost and, and manure, which are amendments, will be also supplemented with organic fertilizers. And the organic fertilizer, it could be chicken manure, it could be feather meal, blood meal, it could be alfalfa meal. There's all sorts of different organic fertilizers that are out there, not synthetic, because that's a huge no-no. You're depleting your soil when you're using them. But the organic ones, you want, you want to sync them with the needs of the plant. So a tomato plant will require lots of nitrogen and let's say a Swiss chard won't as much. So you're, you're sinking your fertilizers with the plant that you're growing. All right, folks, the last little secret that I'll share today is using wood chips in the garden and not just any wood chips, ramiel wood chip. In the spring, all the energy of the tree goes into its top branches to form leaves. And that's where you want to take those branches and shred them into these wood chips that you're putting into your garden. And so you're adding a lot of carbon. You're adding a lot of organic matter that's going to be slow to decay. And this will eventually just create a sponge-like soil, retaining all its moisture and just kind of making it super dynamic with regards to the fertility that's there. And so that's going to be epic for your vegetable. This is a long-term game. It takes a lot of time to make. You can check out this video if you want to learn more about wood chip. That's it for this week. I hope you guys are well. JM out.